Thinkers and Curious Minds, welcome to another episode of Thinking on Paper. My name's Jeremy. This is Mark. We're here to peek at the future while rooted in the past. We want to see where society is heading. We want to help you get there. We're bringing on amazing guests to help us figure out what they're building and how it's going to change the world. Mark, talk to me. What's happening with you today? Um, well, I, I don't think I've ever been um, exci so excited to prepare for a show as I have today because we're talking about artificial intelligence and animation. I've just been thinking about all the cartoons that I used to love, <laughs> like the mysterious cities of gold, Jason, the world warriors, Thundercats, Dungeons and Dragons. It's a Dungeons and Dragons. They were my favorites growing up, but I can was... get on Thundercats. I don't, I don't know the other ones. I don't think well, Dungeons don't know, and Dun Dragons, but the Dun first, Dun two, I don't know. The yeah. mysterious cities of gold. Brilliant. But a question, a question for you. There's uh -oh. one cartoon animation that really, changed everything for me it ch changed what was what i believed what i thought was possible with cartoons can you guess what it is well oh my goodness um let's see south park close it was beavis and butthead actually oh, because close. <laughs> same little bucket <laughs> right yeah I, I i i grew up mtv watching a lot of beavis and butthead and i was thinking actually that, that makes a lot of sense now we, we well we should do our own version of beavis and butthead it's like you're beavis i'm butthead and we sit on a couch and we watch quantum physicists speaking about quantum computers and we watch developers explaining how you create a language model and then we sit on the couch and we go ah, what? we can like heckle him like we yeah. could heckle him. it could be like a new version of mystery science th theater 3000 do you remember that the, one yeah, I, I do but the best bit is like between those like we, between those we watch um we watch keynotes by like tim cook and sam altman and we we give our alternative take on like the beauty and the danger and the you know, like the existential risk that they're presenting. It could be funny, I think. Well, it's like... I think I think you're on to something. Maybe we can ask our guests how we would yeah. even start to pull that off because I think they've done a lot of a lot of interesting stuff in that world. Exactly. Um, this is the intersection of animation and AI. And the thing about it yeah. is like a lot of people you know think all of a sudden when there's AI involved with anything, it's just someone walks into a room, mashes a button, walks away, and like this brilliant piece of art comes out, right? Instead of this that it's a new collection of tools that can actually be used to uh, enhance the creative process. So I'm excited to see where the handoffs are with these guys, but let's intro them. Let's enough of you and I riffing and ranting. We got some great folks on in. Why don't you, why don't you uh, intro? Them? Yeah, I, I will. I think maybe like when you're watching a cartoon, when you're watching animation, you don't really think about what's happening in the background and how difficult it would be today to make another Beavis and Butthead, to make another South Park, to make another Thundercats, like how, blocked the industry is so hopefully today we're going to learn more about how to break through uh, our guests are from toonstar the founders of toonstar toonstar they are john atanasio if i pronounce that correctly he's from former warner brothers and uh, dreamworks executive and louisa huang again from uh, former disney and warner brothers producer i believe i've got that correct uh welcome to the show hey guys Hi. yes that's correct welcome Excellent. so glad you're here Thanks for having us. And you nailed, you nailed the uh, pronunciation. Was, that's good. I've been practicing because I kept missing <laughs> off the, like the, 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 the second SEO. Yeah. Sorry. No, you got it. Perfect. <laughs> well done. Well done. Well, let, let, me start with, let me start with a question for both of you. Um, and maybe you can kind of weave in your backgrounds a little bit as, as you answer this. We're, we're moving into the future of animation, the future of content creation using new technologies can you give us a little rundown or give our listeners a little rundown of like the traditional or the legacy animation process and how that works from like oh here's a cool idea it's a concept to people are watching it and then we can kind of start to overlay what you guys are doing uh in that regard yeah um happy to um and 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 before we, we dive in i was not aware that you guys were actually basically pitching a show and <laughs> see how we did that absolutely that's great that. <laughs> yes well, I, 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 that show. I, I agree that I, show. I, I agree <laughs> i was about to say done the, the beavis and butthead concept like, done it's so let's good let's do it yeah yeah but you so, do realize that this like is like your beavis i'm butthead or your butthead i'm beavis but i think we can <laughs> i think we can put it off 
So for the record, Toonstar execs, you, you realize that this is being recorded, right? We can go back to it and, and say, hey, remember when you agreed to green light? Our, okay. Exactly. Okay. Awesome. Exactly. Um, okay. Well, I think, you know, I will, I, I'll try to do a concise sort of like, uh, you know, rundown of legacy, you know, what it usually takes to um, really kind of like put together uh, like an animated show. Um, I, I think, you know, to start, it's like, it really is uh, the magic of animation is just that there is so much that goes on behind the scenes um and i'm going to condense it you know a lot um but the magic of it and so much work that goes into it but at the same time when you're watching it it's like everything is just you know like you're not really seeing the effort you're you're seeing this like beautiful output you know some funny some you know really dramatic um and it's just it's just wonderful you know art form and it's a wonderful like storytelling medium but you know at the very start you 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 know at the very essence of it it doesn't start any differently than let's say like a you know core piece of like live action content which is you know the script right script characters you know um, a, a story bible that you know you you pitch and you you know try to like sell the essence of the story and then beyond that um the other part is like you have to start you know then there's a visual side of it that there's a ton of exploration that goes into it Right. You have to do a lot of concept art. You have to create a lot of concept characters um, before you sort of like land on the actual sort of like look in artistic feel of what the piece of um, content or what the show is going to be all about. Um, and then you start translating, you know, you start marrying the, the story and the script to that particular um, to the particular look and feel. Right. So you start like refining all of that and then um, then there's, you know, storyboarding. So you take the actual scripts and you have to storyboard all, like everything so that, you know, um, the directors can take a look and be like, okay, well, you know, how does this move um, in, in terms of like the visual married with the story? And then you have things like you have to start putting it together in like a, almost kind of like a rehearsal way. Um, and rehearsal basically means that you have to first do um, recordings, like first recordings in order to be able to kind of like lay in the sketches and the storyboards to be able to just kind of look at animatics and say, okay, well, like, how does this really like play out? Because you can't, you know, animation is so expensive and is so laborious. You really can't afford to say, okay, well, like, let's just make it, see what happens where it was in film, you could shoot it. And then just review the footage and say, okay, well, that take didn't really work. Let's use another take. Like you really try to do as much pre-production as possible to be able to, you know, get that visualization of like, what is this ultimately going to turn out to look like? And once you sort of agree and say, yes, this is what it is, you, you do kind of like um, start going into, okay, now I'm going to lay in like the real characters, the real backgrounds and, and start that sort of like animation process. I think the, um, I think like a good analogy for people that might be really easy to understand, it's like building a house, right? You have to start with the framing. Like you don't basically, you know, like build a house and then walk through and say, well, I didn't really think that wall looks really great there. Let's knock it down. And then like, let's put up another one, right? You could, it just would be incredibly you know inefficient so it's it's a bit like that and and i think that's kind of like a good analogy to think about it it is building a house and that's why it is so expensive and that's why it takes such a long time makes sense john anything to add to that uh you no know, i mean like uh i mean i guess the only thing i, I would add is is the you know to, to what luisa said about um you know the the, the process. I, I think a key part of that is is character and story, and and so you know there there's the the production, and you know obviously there's a lot that goes into the production process. Um, but you know I, I would say uh, you know as in, as important as the the actual you know the production itself is, you know for for us we believe that it always starts you know with character and story. Um, and I, I think that's, you know, probably why you, you hear us talk a lot about like, you know, tech and I'm, and I'm sure we'll get, you know, get into it, but like technology is, is fantastic. And, you know, we've been using machine learning since we, 
launched the company. We've been using generative AI for the past, you know, several years. Uh, and, and so we are a very, you know, we're a very tech forward, you know, um, uh, a very tech forward company and, and those things are great and they all, you know, have their, their benefits and they, they add value. Um, but we also say with, without character and story, you know, none of that stuff's going to matter. Um, because if you can't come up with a story and characters that people, you know, relate to or, or love, or, you know, just want to engage with, you know, the, the all the best tech in the world isn't, isn't going to matter. And, and so for us, it's, it's really a combination of the two that, you know, I think you'll, you'll probably, you know, hear us talk a lot about. It's a bit of the human element that is, is never really going to go away. The emotional context of connecting with a character and feeling what that character is feeling and getting pulled into this dream world, right? And that, and as long as the connection to the dream world is not broken, the story is great. Um, are you guys scared of a potential like Joseph Campbell mod like ai modeler that people can just type is is that even possible like we yeah, want to get so, to the so, deep so, to no, the so, deeper so, questions like the existential so great... questions later jeremy but like oh know, we got to step good. into it okay i'm, I'm getting no, ahead no, no, of myself <laughs> no. we we yeah. like to die we love, we like to dive right in no it's so it's a great question and that's one that's actually something we we talk a fair amount about as well and i think there's and again, this is our opinion, but we think there's this, you know, this misconception of exactly what you said, where there's this like, you know, this, this model or a button and you push a button and out pops the Simpsons or, or South Park or, you know, enter, you know, great, you know, next great franchise. And we'll tell you that that absolutely is not the case today. Um, again, opinion of, you know, opinion of one, will that never be the case? I don't like, I, I can't tell you. Like, I, I don't, you know, my, my belief is that I don't think that will be the case. Um, could be wrong, but I'll tell you, it's absolutely not the case today. And, and don't think that's going to be the case for, for a while. Because, you know, going back to the human element, just like you said, like the human element of building characters, building, you know, story and, and the, these worlds, um, there's not a button you push that does that. And then, you know, I think the other, the other reality is that, and I think, you, you know, you guys set it up great at the beginning. It's like these, there are a lot of different tool sets right now, especially with, with, you know, like generative AI tools and there's not, you know, and, and I think despite what you sit, you see, you know, see with, you know, and I think, the, you know, they've done a great job, like runway Pika, they've got these like sizzles they do and they're very cool. They're sexy sizzles. And, you know, you, you see the output and you're like, oh my God, that's like a two minute piece and it looks incredible. One is the reality. It wasn't one button that somebody pushed to, to make that, that happen. And two, you know, the, the other reality is like there are a lot of different tools that are getting integrated into the production workflow at different stages that make sense. And, and so it's not just like one button solution, um, at, least, at least that, you know, we, we've seen. Um, and so, yeah, that's, that's sort of my my take on it coming coming from the music world so i i had a music production company for about uh 16 years we did music for film and television and podcasting and games and all of that and as we saw like over those over those 16 years you know there was a lot of analog stuff that turned into digital and a lot of plug we call them plugins right where you know these plugins were now these pieces that could affect the digital files of 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 music and now there are presets to those plugins and like everyone's like I don't know why you just don't look back and go, well, that's essentially kind of what a plugin is. You want like ocean ways, like reverb, the convolution is built in and you push a button, right? So, but does that mean the song, you're going to push a button and, and create this great song out of nothing? No, like it helps along the way, right? right? That's right. Yeah. Okay. Right then. So let's move on from the legacy world into the new world, the Toon Star world. Um, I think I was probably under the misapprehension that you're using blockchain as well as artificial intelligence. Could you just explain what technologies you're using first and then how how you're using them? Sure. So we've um, we've actually, you know, kind of like worked really in the um, like with blockchain technology, the AI sort of part of the company really is focused on like the production, the actual production itself is very much, you know, sort of like uh, AI facilitated. Blockchain um, is really sort of like what we utilize to 
you know, kind of think about things like community engagement and, you know, like fandom loyalty, it's very much part of the, you know, kind of like IP and story experience. Um, but really like the production of the actual content is really kind of focused around like AI, um, AI facilitated tools. Um, and so, you know, throughout our pipeline, we, we sort of have, it's integrated throughout. So AI is a part of like the full scope of just kind of everything that we do. It's very much facilitative, right? So we look at, you know, how do we have, you know, tools that help our artists, our storytellers be able to really like fo focus and hone in on the kind of stuff that really is sort of like trying to execute and, you know, tell their creative um, vision um, in a, you know, more efficient way, right? Trying to get to market faster. And that's really critically important because as we sort of step through what's happening in um, like consumption and, and what's happening with content is just distribution was fundamentally disrupted, you know, over like, you know, two decades ago, I would say. And, you know, like it started, you know, with streaming and YouTube and, and like you see, like, it's just how young folks are consuming content today is just incredibly different. Like where they discover content is incredibly different. And that, like, they're not turning on the television, they're turning to their devices, they're going to YouTube. And what's, you know, important about that is that YouTube as an ecosystem and these social platforms as an ecosystem requires, um, require, has a different set of requirements and speed is one of them. And that's really kind of been the biggest challenge for an animation industry that really like speed is not its strength, right? It has a lot of strengths um, in terms of like a storytelling medium, but speed is not. It takes a long, long time and a lot of people in order to be able to create a piece of content. There's a lot of reasons for that as we sort of like, you know, highlighted very quickly up top. And so that's really kind of been the focus is like, how do you really, you know, get to that kind of speed and get to that kind of efficiency in order to put um, new content out in the marketplace? Because I think, you know, what's happened is like, as the legacy system becomes um, you know, more and more disrupted by these distribution forces, um, then they, they're, the bets that they take have to be, you know, like it becomes more and more sort of like conservative, right? Because everything has to be a sure bet because you can't, you can't risk being wrong because it's so expensive and you can't, you can't, do a full production say i'm just gonna throw it on uh, throw it up on youtube because the economics are fundamentally different the speed in which it moves is fundamentally different and so that's really kind of like been the focus for us is like you know how these technologies help be able to you know usher in new content new ip into an ecosystem that requires a great deal of speed and frequency I'm just going to, um, I love to, whenever somebody says something, and I, again, echo from a previous show, and we had Evan Shapiro on a while ago, the, the, media, Shapiro, the, media, Shapiro. Shapiro, the media cartographer, and he, he expanded on just what you said, and I'm going to put a link up here if you're watching this, but um, sorry. <laughs> John, and I what? learned some, and I yeah. learned some, and, it, and it's Sh 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 Shapiro. I didn't realize that. Shap Shapiro. Shapiro. Yeah, he's got Shapiro. like a little bar over the top of it. Yeah, we oh, had a okay. good talk about that. Ooh, I learned some. That's good. Yeah. So, so you guys are you guys are very tech forward in 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 this process, um, and I'm sure you're always kind of investigating like the adjacent technologies that are out there. Over the last two to three years, we've seen a lot of companies use this decentralized ownership model to kind of get. To, to kind of break the um, or disrupt the traditional funding model, right? Where you could kind of come in mm -hmm. and piecemeal and say, hey, I'm going to be the music guy. Here's a couple of tokens. Hey, Mark's going to be the script writer. Here's a couple of tokens. What did you see about that world that was interesting? And what did you see that you knew wasn't going to work? Yeah. Um, so I, I think what we, you know, what we saw is interesting. And, and uh, so our first project uh, we, we did a project called The Gimmicks, and we co-produced that with, with Mila Kunis. Uh, and it, it, was, it was actually, so it was, it, was, it was, there was like a number of like Web3 firsts that were part of that project. Um, it, was, uh, it was like the first 
Web3 community driven animated series. Um, Is that based off yeah. the Stoner Cat NFT yeah. collection? So it was, it was, it wasn't part of that. So it was a different collection, but it was actually, so it was their, uh, it, it was Mila and, and her team. It was their second project in, in the web three space. Um, but it was, it was a separate project. So it wasn't connected in, in any way. Um, and, and, you know, so the idea was, and I think the appeal is that, and, and you guys kind of mentioned it, like they're, they're definitely, you know, and I, th I think it's fair to say, and most people would 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 agree, is that Hollywood is is Hollywood has challenges, fundamental challenges right now, and you know everything from you know you see stories saying that Hollywood's in existential crisis to you know to transition to just just you know flat out broken, um, and those are you know just different different you know experts that are saying stuff like that. And, and I think, you know, at, at least we would agree that like, yes, like legacy traditional Hollywood is absolutely in transition. Um, it's, it's changing. It needs to change. And part of the challenge has been this whole, you know, you guys refer to this gatekeeper economy and this idea that, you know, there's a handful of people that get to decide what is made. Um, and, and really, you know, the, the problem with that is that it's, you know, they're, and, and, you know, Louisa touched on this. It's like what, what that's created is this, you know, this very risk averse environment because all the bets are so big. Um, and then what that's done is now you see, you know, a world where it's like everything, you know, most things it's like prequel, sequel, reboot, you know, remake. <laughs> and that's, that's sort of this, this kind of like, you know, this like reality that, that Hollywood is, you know, that Hollywood and then, and then audiences by virtue of Hollywood being in that, in that sort of, um, uh, that, that, that stage to, you know, audiences are now sort of that, that's all you're getting. And, and so to us, it's like, well, that like, there's something inherently, you know, we just believe like something inherently wrong with like, okay, like, why is it just a handful of people that are deciding what gets made? And then the other challenge is that there's so many great creators and storytellers out there that aren't getting a shot at getting their stories made. And if you look at something, you know, and we're like, we've been involved in the creator economy since, you know, actually, you know, when we were still at Warner Brothers, we were doing projects like early days YouTube and in the MCN space. And so we've been involved in like the creator economy for a long time. And we just, you know, one sort of understand the power of, you know, creators connecting directly with fans and these platforms like YouTube and social media that are, that are, you know, basically in, in enabling that. Um, and, and they're just, they're, you know, when you think about how many creators and storytellers are out there that don't get a chance to get things made, um, that, that's why, you know, that, I think at the end of the day, that's where we feel like that the power is to, is to like, okay, well, why not then, you know, basically look at an alternative model where you're not, you're not, you know, you're not beholden to this gatekeeper system and you can launch a project yourself. And, and, you know, to your point, you, there are other ways to get it financed, whether it's through, you know, um, through, you know, like you said, through communities that want to, con you know, contribute to projects, um, you know, through, there's just a lot of different ways you can, you know, like brands can, you know, can, can sponsor things. So there are a lot of different ways to get, projects finance that don't require you to go through that that like that legacy that legacy system and so i think for us like that you know that was one of the big appeals of like oh well let's try you know and, and that became part of the brand of web3 was very much like hey you know empowering creators empowering fans uh letting fans you know contribute participate you know everything from like you know, it also like impacting narrative and, and character development. So creatively, so, you know, participate creatively and, you know, potentially, you know, commercially. And so I, I think, you know, inherently there's like, there is, a, there, there's an interesting idea there and there, you know, a lot of it is democratization and it's like, why, why do just a handful get to do that when we should be able to sort of afford that to more people? Um, and, that, and that's why, you know, and I, and I still think like that's part of our DNA because whether it's blockchain and, and, you know, we had like the gimmicks was a success on the blockchain. We've done a couple other projects on the blockchain and, and whether it's the blockchain or just digital first, like I would even say before the blockchain, you know, we were doing stuff um, in social media. We had one of our big breakout characters on a platform called Musical.ly that was actually OG TikTok that I don't, you know, I don't know if 
everybody you know knows what musically was but just because really i have like, a sophomore in college daughter uh that was, that was <laughs> yeah. she was into it right when that first came out yeah okay cool yeah so so we yeah so we had a breakout character it was like actually one of the first they called her, her name her name was poppy and they called her like one of the first kind of virtual influencers of the day and she was massive on musically and you know that was that was pre web3 and, and blockchain but it was the same notion where it's like hey we're going direct to consumer we're going direct to fans and we just feel like that there's a lot of you know there's there's a lot of opportunity there and i think the biggest part of the opportunity is just giving storytellers a chance to get stuff made that there it's just not happening via the legacy system i i would um firstly i'm impressed jeremy that you remember stoner cats so that is <laughs> you have made some friends um and a little bit of a, a thought about we spoke about web3 stony cats the nft summer of 2022 and i think that ironically there was a lot more creativity in web3 two three years ago it seems now that it's become very stale and a lot of the creativity has left the the system that left the space and i wonder what the nft summer could have become if something like Toonstar was readily available back then where all of these mad creative ideas, obviously a lot of them turned out to be scams and bad, but a lot of them were really good ideas where these storytellers didn't have the means to, to make these things. I wonder what would have happened had they had this Toonstar technology yeah. now. I think it would have yeah. been a beautiful yeah. time, but we're there now. So um, where, do you want to take this, Jamie, to Stephen and Parker? I believe it's your new favorite show. Yeah, I yeah I watched I watched a few of them today, and you know I come from I one of the shows that you know I've got four kids, and as they were coming up, I think like Gravity Falls was one that pulled me in that that you know just was that's like great. a you know it had a lot of adult nuggets in it, right, and had yeah. these like little adult nuggets. I think that's what this this show does a little bit. There's like some cool little it's nuggets in there. Adult. Some of them were pretty adult. Yeah. Oh, a hundred percent, hundred percent. This is not, this is definitely not coming on Nick Jr. And, and that sort of thing. But uh, talk to us about how this came together. Like I, I know it's a, a partnership with, with a case it starts with character and story and you literally did that, but talk us through that a little bit. <laughs> Should I take it? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> like, okay. I'll take it. Um, yeah. So this is done in um, partnership with the, um, creator of um, really these characters. Uh, his name is Parker James. So he's a TikToker. Um, he's a TikToker, lives outside of Dallas, Texas. And uh, when we met Parker, he was really, he was doing these like funny TikTok shorts with, uh, with a face filter and a voice filter. So he was kind of like acting out the character of Steven um, but he was doing it in a live action format. We, um, you know, we, we, we met him, um, actually through, through his manager who, you know, he, they, they approached us because they had heard about us. I think, you know, through, I think some of the work that we were doing in, in like what three in our shows and they, they were like, you know, Parker's really always like loved animation and, you know, it's just a huge fan of animation and he's got these characters that he's been, you know, kind of working on, but really through social media, um, like live action sketches and they, they were like, you know, like, like, please check it out and see, you know, like, do you think this would be a good fit for animation? And we uh, tuned into his channel and, and right away we were just like, wow, like he really just, you know, you could see the audience engagement. You can see the community um, um, that's built around like these comedy sketches that he does, and and you can see how it well that would translate into an animated character, and and we were just like this. You know, this is something that we were super excited by from like a character standpoint, and so um, really like that's how it got started. Was like we wanted to really take his, the characters that he's built on, um, on TikTok and we translated it into animation. And so we started doing these like uh, test shorts and we were like, let's, let's, you know, we worked with him to kind of create the look and feel that he was excited by. And we, you know, animated it and he put it up on his TikTok channel um, to see like, hey, like, is this resonating with his audience? And right away you can tell, like it just, it, exploded right away on his TikTok channels. Um, and you can tell that this, you know, resonated with his audience. And I think, you know, 
we uh, did a couple of uh, test shorts. And then, you know, soon after we were like, we're going to start extending that particular like short form of stuff and move it into YouTube because YouTube had more variation in like storytelling formats you could do longer form you could do shorts you could do a whole host of different um, type of like you know storytelling formats and so we migrated it to um youtube and started working on the youtube channel um that was wholly you know stephen and parker animated show and you know i think that's kind of what you guys saw and you know it didn't take very long and now it's you know been a bit over a year and it's got an aggregate an aggregate 8 million subscribers. It's got over three and a half billion views. Um, it gets 30 million weekly viewers, um, which is astounding. I mean, that's bigger than, that's bigger, bigger than any network show. So it's, massive. Uh, it's bigger than the Simpsons. Massive, yeah, huge. And what a great process to kind of step into that, right? Cause I know you've, I know uh, the whole thing's kind of getting disintermediated a little bit, right? And we're creating these little efficiency levers in the process, right? And, and starting yeah. with this little test, hey, let's see how this thing does. Hey, let's see yeah. how this thing does. And, um, but, you're, but you're still making bets, right? You're still betting on something that you believe is a good story and that you believe has good characters, but yep. you're able to kind of make some more bets and make, take some flyers too, right? Yeah. Yes, yes. And I think that's really the critical thing. Like you, um, I guess I should like compare it a little bit to the legacy process. And that's like typically, you know, in the old model of, of creating and developing um content it's like you you pitch to you know specific executives and they have like a you know either a mandate on this is the kind of content we want to create or here's kind of like um a personal taste that you know taste profile that they have and they they green light they option and green light based on really kind of like how they feel about it and based on their expertise and their experience which I don't want to discount that because I think that there, you know, like there definitely has been really successful things that have been created, you know, kind of based off of that model. But I think that there is something about leaning into community there, you know, we are, we are a company that values data, that values technology. And I think the beauty of what you are able to do now in terms of like really getting audience reaction and i don't you know like i, I think that there is also like a mis misconception of like oh well like you're putting it up and you're just